everybody, my name is Old School Nerd. Welcome in. It is Thursday, July 13th, and I'm in the premiere queue waiting to see the world premiere of the new Evil track from the album, the fourth song. It's called When Mortal Coils Shed. Now, I sat down with Old Drake, and that interview is coming up first. We talk about uh, the hilarities of Twitch, uh, being parents, uh, growing older, uh, kind of being OGs in what we do. But most importantly, we talk about Evile and their new sound, I guess you could say. Now, they're still as heavy as all can be, and they're as fast as you can ever imagine. However, they are putting more dynamic, more storytelling into their music. And this one is special. So enjoy this conversation between Old Drake and I, and then right afterwards, this reaction to this amazing song that he specifically states in this interview is one of the most important songs on the album. Are you ready? I don't care. I'm pressing play anyway. Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd. Have you ever had that thing where you like, you see a metal band and you're like, dude, if I could ever talk to that guy, I would ask him and then you, and then you forget to write that question down? Yeah, me too. This is my sit down chat with Old Drake from Evile. Is it, we're going to say Evile, right? Yes. We're not going to use the Spanish pronunciation? Well, Everly. No, no. No, I we're not going to do that? Evile. Okay, good, good, good. Good call. Second most embarrassing thing that can ever happen to a uh, thrash metal band is to have your name mispronounced in the most feminine way possible. And that happened to you in Spain. That's not the question I have for you. Welcome in, sir. How are you? <laughs> I'm really good. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm doing really well. Um, this was not really expected for me. Okay. So I, I always I always get the comedy bands. I get the Nano War Steel or the Forest yeah. Schrantz, right? Or the Ale Storm yeah. or the bands that have one or more members that will probably show their junk on camera. And they're like, you'll have fun with this because you're the nerd and you're funny. But then when Napalm was like, hey, you're an old school thrash metal fan. I'm like, yes, I am. Uh, you know, you know who Evil is, right? Yeah, aren't they? Don't they have like a new album? They're like, yeah. You want to interview uh, Mr. Drake? I went. Is it April? Is it April first? You guys messing with me? And they were like, no. And I'm like, please. So here we are. Hey. Uh, okay. So <laughs> we've already established before this before this um, interview started that uh, you and I both have similar old school thrash loves you love do. a certain person from canada who plays thrashy amazing guitar last name Brian waters oh. Bri <laughs> i was gonna go with celine dion but if you're gonna go with that one we can go with the, we can go with the but um no, no, i jeff, mean jeff waters yeah. jeff waters from annihilator yeah um yep. i think my favorite part about jeff is he is smartly out of control um, yeah, he can do everything. He the riffs, he's amazing at rhythm, he's amazing at lead, he's amazing at songwriting. The best. So speaking of people who are really good at a bunch of stuff, somebody told me you were pretty good at this kind of stuff. Or at least somebody told me you love songwriting, which led us to this new album. We know who Evil was until about two months ago. But now it's like like, you remember the old, awesome, really cool vinyls, like Led Zeppelin 3? You open it up, and you're like, wow, look at all this stuff. And all of a sudden, there's like this hidden panel. Whoa, <laughs> they do that too? It's literally your hidden panel of your career. Okay. So, Evil, as you know, have always been primarily thrash. Yeah. A lot of speed, you know. But we've done everything. We've got ballads. We've got, like, mid pace stuff, heavier stuff. Um, so, the last album we released, Hell Unleashed, was just pretty much full throttle the whole time just brutal speed we even covered a death metal band in there and uh, this album we just thought i don't want to do the same thing again you know we, we don't want to release the exact same album so we thought let's just flip it on its head let's do more more slow with a bit of speed so we've not really done it before we, we looked at all the tempos we've done before and we, we always either did really fast or mid-paced there was never any of this here or any anything beyond that. So we looked at all our tempos and we're like, why did we never delve into these regions? So this album is literally just us experimenting 
and having fun with all the tempos we've never tried. It's still evil. It's still the same shit. So, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard to uh, to miss your side profile. Um, you're pretty you're pretty iconic when you step up. Like that's Drake, right? <laughs> Then why is why is he singing like Brian Adams? I don't know, but he is. No, seriously. Why well, why I mean, if you need to do it, we we can do a we can do a Disney ballad now. Let's let's get the guys together. Um, here here's here's my thought. I think the word you described your last album was well. We can't just go 500 miles an hour all the time. That yeah. was the exact words you used in an interview, or at least in some kind of something you said about the last album and why yeah. we're shifting. When you sat down to write this album. And I understand it's probably, it's more of a, do you do most of the songwriting or is there like a collaborative effort? It's, it's mostly me, but it's always open to everyone else. So whenever a song is built on, I'll, I'll start with the riff and then go with it. And I'll send it to the band. Like, what do you think? Is this good? Is this shit? They'll have their input. Like maybe not this, but, or it sounds cool. It's just, it's just completely building all the time. Basically. Okay. I just didn't know if you guys did the whole, you know, Metallica post black album or, you know, or, yeah. you know, it just, you know, every band does it differently. Okay. Cause this is such a far departure from everything else. What was the biggest change going into this album? Because it just can't be, Hey, let's, let's, let's just change everything. No, no, no. You can't just say, let's change everything. When you have a musicians who play at a very high level, a very fast level. And then you're saying, we're going to redo everything. What was the thought process? What was, what was the big key in your mind that stuck with this whole process during this album? Well, to us, there was no change. The only change was the tempos and the fact that I, I got a bit better on vocals so I could sing a bit more melodically and not ruin my voice. So a combination of those two things was just like, well, this is working. This is cool. So the more, the more we played, the more I wrote the, that kind of speed. We were just really into it. We're like, we love the groovy stuff. We love the heavier stuff, like the Pantera stuff, like you said. And we've just never had the opportunity to play at those speeds. And it's just so fun to do. And, and it's great playing thrash. It's great playing 500 miles an hour. But sometimes you're just like, can I, can I just slow down just, just for one song? <laughs> it's really fun to watch Dragon Force push the limits of time. But there's nothing funnier than when they just go off and do something completely bonkers and you can see how much fun they're having doing not yeah. the how fast yeah. and how much can we extend ourselves it must be really nice to not have to focus your entire being to make sure you're keeping everything in line when you can actually look at the crowd and go man this is just fun because i am yeah. playing this song we're playing at a speed that i can i don't have to be completely laser focused and i can share some of the energy with everybody looking at me for a change that's got to yeah. be a big thing it it tra it translates a bit better. Like we love the thrash stuff. And whenever we play festivals, it goes on really well. But then when you've got the people who don't know the band or maybe aren't into thrash, as soon as you're playing 500 miles an hour, you can see them just kind of. But as soon as you <laughs> as soon as you play that heavy groovy beat, you you see a lot more heads looking your way, going, "Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> exactly." But yeah, it's the slower, groovier stuff definitely hooks a lot more people, and it you have the back and forth easier with the groovier stuff. I find it it casts a bigger net, so you have more yeah. fish come in. You're like, Pull now that you're all here, I'm gonna kick you in the me. face with a golf shoe repeatedly. Give, um, give me those streaming rods. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. So, um, one more question about the album: Is there one particular song? That really, and I ask this from every person I interview, some people say there is no song that does that on this album because they're all unique. But is there one particular song that hits with you that you need people to really pay attention to when they get the album? Yeah, definitely. It's um, track four is called When Mortal Coils Shed. And it's our third ballad in the band. We've got Immemorium that was for our bassist back in 2011. Mm -hmm. A tomb from the skull album and i didn't think we were going to do another ballad because i don't know it just didn't feel right until the idea came up and i was just thinking this has to become something so i spent a good nearly two years on it and 
Um, it's all about, it's dealing with loss, basically. Um, even 15, 20 years after losing someone close to you, it can still affect you. You can still feel their presence or wish they were there or wish you were back then with them and everything that comes with losing someone. So it's, it really means a lot to me, that song. I think people don't realize that when you lose members in a, in a band, especially for an elongated time, it's similar mm. to family because just like families, you create memories, bands create emotions, which then become strong memories that they share those triumphs, yeah. the downfalls, the struggles, it, you share all of it. And sometimes things go bad and people leave bands just like families and relationships and everything else. But when mm. someone's taken away, there's a void. Even though, look, the entire lineup, Ben, Joel, Adam, yourself, solid lineup, you still miss. There's still the hole. And you don't fill the hole. You just say, yeah. look, we're still going to have this here. We draw from it. It's part, it's part of who we are. Yeah. <sighs> so track four, right? Yeah, track four. I mean, the, the band's great. You know, Joel, our bassist who replaced Mike, love him. He's great. But we, when we started, we agreed it's always going to be us four or nothing and as soon as we lost mike it was like we we have to carry on for mike and i think since then i i haven't been the same definitely i've since that it's just it's changed all of us i think because i don't know I, th I think a few lights went out that never came back on basically yeah there's a couple bands going through that right now i've spoken to a few um and it, it's it's very difficult you don't say goodbye mm. uh, you you can't it's 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 no. every time you see your logo every time you see an album every time you hear a bass line it's it's him it's you yeah. know and you you honor joel you thank joel you're happy joel's there joel's family and that's how it is but um mm. you that person uh is not there to fill the void they're just help honoring the continuation of uh evil all right let's mm. have some fun um so I see that little uh, light up sign you got behind you. This is uh, old rake. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. And you that's, have that. That's uh, not yeah. for my ego. Yeah. That's, I, I stream on Twitch and that's my I logo. was going to okay. See, now you're ruining my joke before I can even say the joke. I was going to talk about your soundproofing on your wall right there. Your little sure oh, okay. mic, your little boom mic right there. Um, there's only one reason why people have this much shit on their walls. Yeah. with a backlight sign and, and Atari on the top. And it ain't to do videos. And it ain't to do interviews. You stream on Twitch too. So yeah. I get it. I've checked out your stream. Um, I, I love metalheads that have streams. Um, yours trips me out because it's fun. Um, of course, <laughs> you have people like 6-6-Samus playing drums. You've, yeah, got, yeah. you've got Rickard, Eggbird, from Elaine, who's insane on Twitch. Yeah. More people know him from his Twitch channel than the fact he's a guitar player in a heavy metal band. I was like, yeah, that yeah. insane dude is actually a guitar player. So how do you, how do you find that? I mean, it's, you find the time because we all do, but because uh, this is my third job. Um, <laughs> what's, what is the difference in regards to, let's say, okay, so you've had this band and technically, you've had your band longer than Twitch has been around. Quite a bit longer than Twitch has been around. Yeah, yeah. What is that outlet for you? When, if you were to describe your stream to people who haven't seen it yet, is yours music base? Is it personal? Do you do lots of chatting? Do you do lots of guitar work? Share the whole Twitch thing, because some of your fan base may not even know you're on there. Yeah, so I, I think a lot of people don't understand what Twitch is. I've spoken to some people saying like... I'm what, honest, is it I'm like, not sure. <laughs> right. You know, I, I'm still not familiar, but um, it's mainly music-based. Uh, I have a an annoying ability from years of learning things from ear to figure melodies and tunes out in my head on the guitar. So like, if I'm watching TV and a, a commercial comes on and there's a tune, I figure it out in my head on the guitar and my other half is like... You've just figured that out, haven't you? And I'm like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so on my stream, we basically open requests for any song from any genre in the entire world within reason. You know, I'm, I'm not going to figure out a suffocation song in, in three minutes. So, uh, and we just play Aww. along to whatever songs, you know, maybe five <laughs> minutes. 
Um, and I, I just figure out songs while the song's playing, um, and it's fun. It's, it's a laugh. And other than that, play some eval stuff, maybe some Q and A, and checking out some new stuff. And that's about it. Similar story for me. I, I played video games because that's what we all did at nice. the beginning. But then I shifted over to playing cajon and djembe, and I started doing uh, cajon acoustic accompaniments to songs that shouldn't have one. Oh, nice. No, it's horrible. Anyway, no, cool. <laughs> I went from that to doing music reactions because I was like, nobody wants to hear a cajon play a metal song until someone does an acoustic <laughs> album. Okay, so when people interact with you on Twitch, um, it's a little different than in a live crowd because they're just a, they're just a little name and they have their little yeah. what they say and stuff um how do you <laughs> and this is my favorite part okay so you live in the uk correct mm -hmm. okay because i didn't know yeah. if you're still there if you've because you know people move around all the time hmm. the the twitch audience is very weird depending upon where you're at like when do you normally stream? Now, I know this is, has nothing to do with the album, everybody, but it, to understand the behind the scenes thought process of an artist, you got to get into what they do on the, on the off times. When, it, when is your normal stream times? So usually it's 9 p.m. in the UK on a Saturday night. Okay. That's the only time I can really fit it in these days. All right. So n nobody from Australia is in your stream? No, not really, no. God, you're missing out. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> they're nuts but um no okay so similar i get it uh, my normal stream time is about that but i do it during the week um what is your favorite fan base on twitch when you see somebody pop into the channel they have all these questions you have people from all over the world and have you noticed how depending upon where they're from in the world the questions can just be a little unique unique is a great word we're gonna go with unique yeah yeah. What, what's what's your favorite the favorite question you've ever gotten on a Twitch stream? Shit. Um, <laughs> God. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Is going but I'm, blank. Um, I've had some re really offensive questions, but they were genuinely asking. Um, uh, I I can't remember. I'm really sorry. Uh, it's but, okay. Yeah. Most people aren't ready for the Twitch stuff because they know I'm going to ask you about the album and stuff. But I like to talk about the person. Because, um, you know, it's who I am. Okay, so you full-time metal band member, Twitch, Twitch streamer. What do you do for fun? Well, I've got two kids that are two and five. Um, so I don't have time for anything beyond. So I work full-time. I have the band full-time. Twitch, two kids, and a fit. I fit some sleep in somewhere. That's about it. You just shared your only 30 minutes he had available for the month with me. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Um, so here's a question for you. And this is kind of a, um, it's a trick question. Do you even remember what it was like before you had your kids as a dad? No. Do you even remember what it was like? No. I, don't, I, I don't either. I have three girls and I'm like, I don't even remember what my life was like before them. Because once you have them, your focus is completely changed. Yeah, I don't Your think I've had a completely changed. I don't think I've had a selfish for me thought in twenty <laughs> in twenty three years because I have one that's twenty three and I'm like I don't. I sat down last night. Everyone was in bed, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go on. I've got a PS4. I wish I had a PS5, but I can't afford <laughs> that shit. Um, and I played the original Final Fantasy VII for one hour, and I felt guilty. <laughs> it's like oh a bit too long i'm not <laughs> allowed to I'm, I'm not applaud, allowed to play the original seven because i will play that thing until my media yeah. does nine 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 yeah anyway yes yeah. yeah, so you know yep. that's that's a commonality thing for us as well um here's the thing and uh I, i'm gonna i'm not gonna keep you here forever um thoughts about the album are there thoughts about live shows tours i know it's kind of early for that is there anything that you're thinking about you want to share with everybody? Because people are going to start asking questions because this album reminds them of everything that people love about music right now, especially in storytelling. So do not be surprised if you're caught up and drug out of that house of yours fairly short order. <laughs> yeah, we, we've 
at the moment we've only got the uk date sorted we're, we're looking at festivals next year because of the release time was a bit um well now um <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we only got two but, festivals left, but I think we can squeeze it yeah, in this year. No, no it's... pretty much. We're actually playing a festival in Lithuania this Friday on the day the album comes out. And um, I think it's really difficult at the moment for us to do proper tours because everything's so expensive. Like we tried to get to North America last year. And even before we would leave the country, we were already in the red. And it was just, there's no point, no point yeah. at all financially. Um, same in Europe, it's difficult. Plus, with us working full time, you know, what employer is going to be okay with? Oh, can I get two and a half months off? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you are you are difficult. not you are not the only person getting that expense bug. Like bands are desperate to come over to the U.S. and tour, but I've yeah. actually told them to their faces: uh, keep your keep your Germany, France, Spain, Italy, you know, your European runs. For a while to see if we can't get things settled down over here because yeah. it's it's insane i i've the only bands that i've seen pull it off are ones that literally get together with a group of bands and you have almost four bands on a bill just so they can share the yeah. amount of ex, the expense of moving and they just move as a big group together um mm. to, to be able to comp, accomplish all the overages because hey you, you've been to the u.s before so mm you know that there are no two hour drives from one place to no. another here it's no. you're lucky if it's less than nine hours whereas in nine hours yeah. you could damn near drive halfway across europe on a good day so it's like yeah. it's it's a i think people unfortunately they don't understand that yes there's two things that'll that'll kill you when you if you're a year if you're a i've seen american bands go to europe and have amazing tours even in the last two years because they they budgeted for being in the u.s so when they get to europe they're like oh we didn't spend that money for that we didn't spend that much for that yeah, yeah. and they don't realize that you can and what's really awesome about uh europe uh towns is the venue has a fan base as much as like your band evil just won't get the fans that know that evil's coming the fans in that mm -hmm. local area are fans of that venue because it's their home venue so they're going yeah. to they're going to shows and you'll have half the crowd has no idea who you are. Best part about it is by the time you're done, everybody knows who you are and you're like, this really worked out well for us. And those fuckers will follow you from city to city. You can't do that yeah. in the US because it's just too far. I, I remember we did five months in 2010 in North America, like five consecutive tours. It's like 170 shows, I can't remember. Did you just and, you, yeah, you I, tag you tagged on with with um was that which in 2010 was that with uh which there band? was a few I know that so you were was, with multiples you were with uh I'm because I think I saw you on 2000 uh, it was 2000 and October of 2010 yeah so that might have been Overkill or Creator I'm Creator can't remember. it was Creator yeah. Creator yeah. with a K get that shit right yes um they see shit. And uh, yeah, so that that's how long I go back with this one. So um, yeah, I, okay. I remember the drives in the US. Oh. I remember a run run of a few shows. It was like sixteen hour drive. We get to the venue. We're on stage in fifteen minutes. We get the gear in. We play. We get out. Get in the van. Right. It's an eighteen hour drive now. So we drive to the next show. We get there within a half an hour of going. It was just it's I, insane. People I, don't understand. And with the whole bus thing now and the whole venue stuff now it's just you don't know what you're going to get because now you have to put in days off if it's too far of a stretch and days off kills a band so i've seen yeah, bands literally be on a tour with a bigger band right and on the day off that the bigger band can take they find any town or yeah. mild city yeah. between that spot they're doing a, a, a spot show there so i tell everybody hey if you're doing the run from Houston or San Antonio to New Orleans, and you have a day in the middle. I'm here in Lafayette. Y'all stop by. We got a menu. I'll, I'll get the music venue. We'll pop it up. Get you. Yep. Get you on the stage. People are having to do that now. Okay, mm -hmm. let's 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 wrap this up properly. Okay, July 14th. You guys are playing a show in Lithuania, but more importantly, the album comes out for all the rest of us that can't get to Lithuania. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone needs to listen to the whole album, share the whole album. But find someone you care about 
and check out track four specifically. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and also check out your guy. Um, oh, by the way, on on Twitch, it's Old Drake. It's all one word on on Twitch, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Our find Old the, Rake. Old Old Rake. <laughs> I see you have it on the sign like that, but it, your last name is Drake, right? Yeah. But you yeah, just, I, it was Ulrich. really clever. I, I moved the D over to the L and made it old Rake. <laughs> well, move, old well Drake. moving the D is how you became a dad twice. Good job on that one too, buddy. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> this is why they will let me interview you new, but they will not let me interview Melissa Bonnie. Okay. Um, <laughs> I love her so much, but I wouldn't let her. I wouldn't let me interview her either. I'm too, I'm too spastic. Uh, I give people conniptions. All right. Uh, my name is Old Schooler. This is Old, Old Rake or Old Drake, however you want to say it. Twitch streamer, super dad, full time employee, trying to keep his job, full time metalhead for years, putting out some of the best storytelling music you guys have ever done. And I'm not joking. And it, look, I saw you in 2010. If I can see you in 2010 and come back now and say, this album, it's. It's it's diff it's storytelling, man. It, you're allowing Thank yourself you. to move in and out. It, it it moves. It it's not just super fast. It's not just zombies. We're, we're not just yeah. We're not just gonna drudge through this. This is not a funeral dirge. You can do all mm -hmm. four in one song and take somebody on a roller coaster, and that is amazing. I thank you for your time, and um, blessings, safety on your travels and touring. Good health. I heard you had a little sickness last week, and uh, hopefully you're feeling better. And um, I, do. I do. And more than anything, as much as I love the album, I appreciate you're an amazing dad, number one. Thank and you, sir. That will never change. All right, everybody. It's that guy over there with the amazing beard, that, that curly mohawk that I can't seem to pull off. I can't do that. I can't do that. I don't do anything with it, literally. <laughs> You are you are you are such a rock diva. Look at you. You probably you probably have like I woke up like this. <laughs> only purple Skittles in his rider. That, that's the kind of crap you got going on. All right, buddy. Have a great day. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Old Drake from Evil. Okay, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that interview. This is a special moment. Okay, the song that Old Drake talked about was "When Mortal Coil Shed." It's premiering today. And this is a very interesting point. Now, I'm not going to stop the video. We're at the premiere. I've paused it for the premiere just so I could tell you this. I know people liken Evile's music in some ways to some of their favorite Metallica feels, Pantera, of course, Annihilator, and those things, okay? Just like Metallica, Evile had tragedy. You know, they lost their bass player, Mike, back in 2010 in a tragedy. Uh, 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 he had a... Um, an, an embolism, a blood clot, and, and they lost him on tour. And it, it's devastating to lose a family member, okay? Because bands are like families. We talked about that in the interview. But Joel stepped in, and unlike some of the struggles that Metallica had through their time, they, Joel has really been the step forth member of that family to fill that void. However, like Old Drake says, Joel is amazing. And he's an amazing person and he's family. But there's still a hole for Mike. It has nothing to do with the bass playing. It has nothing to do with the person. You just, you have Joel there as, as part of the family, but the hole never goes away with the loss of Mike. And so this song is going to be very reflective. It's very personal. So I want you to keep that in mind when you're, when you're, when you're watching this video. I haven't seen it. This is the first time for me. But specifically, when we talk about loss, we move forward. How can we? We find a way. And, you know, I think every day, the band and the fans thank God for Joel every day because Eval continues on. And they do their best uh, to make beautiful music and they honor Mike's legacy. And this is how you do it. Are you ready? When Mortal Coal Shed. Share this with someone who needs to hear it, because if you've got someone dealing with loss, this, this may be what they need to hear. Are you ready? Let's do it. I am not stopping this video.
the hell out of the way. Okay. Focus. Try not to cry, damn it. <laughs> Is it like the Unforgiven? Is this sad but true for them? There are semblances. You feel it? It's the arrangement. Ooh. Oh. I thought, man, they left that soft tone behind and went hard, but it's a balance. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Really good.
Wow. It's haunting, man. Oh, we're not done. We're not done. Okay, it's it's gonna fade out and it's gonna go to that um, incredible uh, recap that Napalm puts in the end of their videos, which is awesome. All right, as as we as we watch this video play in the background, um, it's very haunting. It is very special. There's gonna be things in that that remind you of other really incredible metal songs, especially the ballads that deal with loss. And we, we you, it's evident. It's evident both in the key that it's played in. The, uh, the arrangement, the way the, the storytelling unfolds, it's very familiar. The problem is, is so is loss. That's the one thing that we're all connected to. Well, two things. We're all connected by the fact that all of us can experience loss. The other thing, music. It's something that we can share. I challenge all of you, you know someone who needs to hear this song. Share that with them. Because we think about bands like Evile and we think about all these other bands and they're like, oh, they're rock stars. No, the, these guys are dads, they're husbands, they have jobs, they create music, they're people and people have loss. Now, sometimes it's tragic, like in the instance of, of Mike and, and he will never be forgotten. Uh, luckily, you know, you have, you have people like Joel and, and they fill that gap and they help make things better. The journey is long. So find people that help you process your grief, process that loss. It doesn't go away. The void is still there. But at least they can help you share that burden. And that's important. My name is Old School Nerd. That was my incredible conversation with Old Drake. Special kind of guy. Sweet man. He's an amazing guy. Uh, we laughed a little bit before the interview and after the video. There's some things you don't get to see, but it's a personal thing, you know? He's, he's one of those OGs that I've always wanted to talk to. So I got that opportunity. I'm very thankful. So I want to say to uh, Old Drake, thank you, sir, so much. For Napalm, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And to everybody in Evile, good luck on the road. Outstanding work on this album. Can't wait to hear the rest of it. And uh, to all of you, thank you for coming in. Love one another. Take care of each other. We're all stuck in this mob all together. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. It really helps the channel grow. Also, if you want to subscribe, right there. Big thank you to all my Patreons out there. We appreciate everything you do. If you want more content like this video, check them out above. Remember, love one another, take care of each other. We're all stuck on this mud ball together. We'll see you later.